Hey, good morning, class. Good morning. How is everybody today? Good. Good. Okay, so today we have a lesson on scientific notation. Um, Sarah, can you read the content objective? Students will convert numbers from standard notation to scientific notation and vice versa. Students will identify when scientific notation is appropriate, then standard notation, um, and why. Um, thank you. And what about you, Charlie? Can you read the language objectives? Students will describe a situation when it would be more appropriate to use scientific notation as opposed to standard notation. Students will summarize key points in the video on powers of 10. Great. So those are the objectives for today. So um, as an agenda, what we're going to do today, we're going to go review some key vocabulary. We're going to have a little lesson on scientific notation. We're going to watch a video on scientific notation. Um, and we're going to have a little activity with cards on scientific notation. We're also going to do some practice in converting numbers from standard notation to scientific notation and vice versa. So over here, it says our key vocabulary. I know we went over bases and exponents the other day as a review. So scientific notation is a way of expressing numbers that are too big or too small to be written in standard notation. Can you think of something that would be uh, really, really large? Three trillion feet. Three trillion feet? Okay. Where else do you see really large or really small uh, measurements? Chemistry-wise, you have really small numbers that you have to work with, like you'll have really small amounts of a solution that you'll have to deal with, um, or their atomic mass, or their, ato their atomic weight. You can also, for distance, some things are too large, and you'd rather use scientific notation. Like the distance between what? I don't know, China and here. Great! So if you're thinking of really large distances, that might be better expressed in scientific notation. Have any of you ever heard of a quadrillion before? Yeah, it's the one that comes after a trillion. So you have like a million, a billion, a trillion, a quadrillion. Right. So it's like a number... With 15 zeros. Right. This number is four quadrillion. Right. Now, this number, you could sit there and write out all these zeros, which would take a really long time, or you could use scientific notation. And there is a way to use scientific notation to express really large numbers. I'm going to go over the rules for it. So it says one, de one number, a decimal point, and other numbers. In this case, there are no other numbers. These are all trailing zeros, so we don't need the decimal right. point. Then times 10 to some number. Mm -hmm. And then exponent is the number of times the decimal point is moved. Right. So this could be expressed using one number, which is what? Four. Four. Times ten. Times ten. To the fifteenth. So we have four times ten to the fifteenth. Let's think a little bit about how when we raise ten to a power, how it works. Okay. So we've got... Um, We've got 10 to the zero. What does that equal? One. One. Okay, now we have 10 to the first. What's that one? 10. 10. Then we have 10 to the second. What's that one? Um, uh, 100. 100. And then we have 10 to the third. 1,000. So what do we notice, Charlie, when we look at this? They all gain a zero. It's they all zero. gain a zero. What else do we notice? Well, there are zero, zero start in the first one, so it has zero. The multiples one. of 10. Okay. So what you notice is what about the zeros? Yes. You're, you're adding the number of zeros that are the exponent. Right. So if you had 10 to the hundredth, you're going to have 100 zeros. You're going to have 100 zeros. Excellent. So it would be some really big... Nobody has 
time to write that. No one has time to write that. So this would be a hundred zeros. Now, does anybody know what the hundred zero, this number is? One with a hundred zeros? Um, it's called a Google. So that number would be better written with scientific notation. How could we follow those rules and write this in an easier way? What's the first number that you see? Nine. Nine. Then we put a decimal, just like that, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Now, so we have one number, then a decimal point. And now it says, what are the other numbers? Do not include trailing zeros. What are the other numbers that don't include trailing zeros? These are the only trailing zeros because they're at the end. These are what's called included zeros because they're in between two digits that are non-zero digits. So, what are the other, uh, it says other numbers do not include trailing cool zeros. Numbers. What, what are the other numbers, Charlie? Um, zero. Uh-huh. Then what? Three. Uh-huh. Five. Right. Two. Uh-huh. Oh. Uh-huh. One. Okay. Now, these are trailing zeros, so we don't include them. Now, we have to figure out times 10 to the what? Times 10 to the what? I'm gonna put a question mark here. Now it says this what, this question mark, is the number of times the decimal point is moved. So, how many times do we have to move the decimal point from over here to get it all the way to the end, which Nine would be seven. over here, Sarah? How many? No. Nine, you're right. So this is 10 to the ninth. Think about a really small number. This, these are the rules for when you're looking at really big numbers. Right. When you're looking at really small numbers, the only thing that changes in the rules is do not include leading or trailing zeros. So it's gonna be leading you have a negative. or trailing zeros. Like a lot of times 10 to the negative. Whatever. Right, you will, you will. But let's go over what that looks like. Let's go over that. We know that 10 to the zero from before, you guys told me that was one. Mm -hmm. Now, you do use negative exponents when you're talking about really small numbers. So, you would have 10 to the negative one. Does anybody know how to express that as a fraction? One. Oh, it's one tenth. One tenth which is also written as point one. Point one. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, what about 10 to the negative two? What's that one as a French? One one hundredth. And that's written like yeah. that. What about 10 to the negative three? Charlie, what do you think? One one thousandth. Right. Point oh oh. Now let's think about this. This exponent is the same as how many uh, spots you see after the decimal. Notice there's negative three here, and there's one, two, three places there. Okay. Right. So we know that'll happen if it's net ten to the negative hundredth power, mm -hmm. there will be a hundred spots after the decimal. Okay, so let's think about a really small number. So we know we need negative exponents to represent really small numbers. So let's think about a really small number. What is the first number that you're going to start with? A Eight, because that's the first number that we see. So we do eight. We start with the eight. Then you have point six five. Then it says decimal point and other numbers. So point six five times ten to the. Let's look over here. Exponent is the number of times the decimal point is moved. The negative ten. There's nine zeros, and then you have to move it over one more to have it be eight point something. That's great. So it's 10 to the negative 10. Now I'd like to show you a video that um, discusses 
scientific notation. It's a video on powers of 10. And I'm gonna read, the, read this to you, what the um, a worksheet that you're gonna take notes on during the video. And then you're gonna talk about your answers and we'll go over them as a class. Now that we've discussed with our partners, how many meters represent the distance covered in one light year? 10 to the eighth meters. 10 to the eighth is right, thank you. What's smaller, the nucleus of a cell or an electron? An electron because inside a, inside a nucleus it are electrons, so. Right, uh, negative exponents represent? The smaller the number gets. Great job. And what do you see as the main point of the video? I saw that the main point of the video was to discuss and explain scientific notation and why we use it. So, and we can see how big an object gets and why we should use scientific notation when using, when having such big, large numbers or when having such small numbers. Terrific class. Um, now we're gonna go on to an activity where we have to match cards. We're gonna have an activity where we match numbers in scientific notation with their equivalent number in standard notation. Good. We're going to work with a partner to do this. Okay. Great job on the card matching activity class. Okay, so now our final activity is going to be an exit ticket. Uh, you're going to answer some questions where you have to analyze um, when you would use scientific notation and when you would use standard notation, and then you have to convert numbers between standard notation and scientific notation. Perfect. Thank um, you. Also, there's gonna be some related homework. It's on Delta Map. So just let's see if we met our objectives. And the content objectives are that we're gonna convert numbers from standard notation to scientific notation. Do we feel it? Like, can you hold up how many fingers, whether you uh, five represents that you understand how to convert from scientific notation and zero to standard notation and no fingers represents that you really don't understand. It's somewhere in between. Hold up how many fingers represent your understanding. Okay, good job. So thank you so much class. Don't thank forget you. to do your homework on Delta Math, and I'll be collecting the exit tickets. Yep. Thank you.